This is a comparison video between the original Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney trilogy and the three mainline Danganronpa games. Both of these originated as portable visual novels with crime-solving elements. Over the course of each series, you investigate murders, gathering clues, and interviewing witnesses, and then you make your case at trial. Despite that core similarity, the two go about presenting mysteries in very different ways, varying massively in terms of mechanical and narrative complexity, structure, tone, and difficulty. Between the two, I came away preferring Phoenix Wright for what I felt were more complex cases, and I found myself preferring the far lighter tone, but neither were slouches. Both have their respective strengths and weaknesses, and in this video, I'll be delving into both. The Phoenix Wright footage was recorded by Zliza and used with their permission. Both of them take place in settings which have fantastical elements but are real-world adjacent. Phoenix Wright is more contemporary fantasy, with occasional spirit channeling and regular magic. Danganronpa, meanwhile, goes in a more sci-fi direction, with robots, mechs, virtual realities, and more making appearances. While both series do have these fantastical elements, both of them use their respective trappings sparingly. This I find to be a positive. While there are cases built around things such as spirit channeling and a virtual reality murder, they each establish their rules. And often, the murders are a lot more mundane than they appear, and have to be explained away by mundane means. Between the two, Phoenix Wright is far more rooted in reality taking place in a sort of bizarre Japan America, and following the green defense attorney Phoenix Wright and his assistant and spirit medium in training, Maya Fey. In each game, they take on an odd selection of clients, fighting in a court system heavily stacked against the defense to prove their innocence, and meeting an odd cast of characters with each new case. Danganronpa is a bit more far-flung. It begins in Hope's Peak Academy, a school for ultimates. Teenage prodigies scouted to come to this illustrious institution where they can hone their respective talents. However, 15 students arrive only to be captured by the robot bear Monokuma, the school having been turned into a prison to play host to a cruel death game. Danganronpa's death game is pretty straightforward. Once the game starts, the only way to win is to kill a classmate and go on court. Once someone commits a murder, they become the blackened. When the body's discovered by three people, an investigation period is allowed, followed by a class trial, which will end in a vote. If the killer is outed, they alone receive punishment. If they go undiscovered, they get to graduate, and everyone else faces punishment. The punishment, of course, is death. The Blackened is only allowed two kills, and Monokuma will never commit a murder, but will gleefully be selective with the information he gives out if it makes the trial more interesting. In the class trials, every single participant is judge and jury. You're playing as one of many voices and have to convince everyone beyond a shadow of a doubt who the killer is. You're rarely the only person bringing clues or red herrings to the table. Ace Attorney's courts are a piss take of the Japanese judicial system, with its notoriously high prosecution rate. While it doesn't go into the dark and gritty, the satire is pretty clear. The prosecution gets far greater resources and respect than the defense. They're the ones who decide if a case should go to trial. They're the ones who get confessions. And they're the ones who actually get to work with the police. As such, a judge is far more inclined to listen to a prosecutor. As Phoenix, every session in court is an uphill battle. The burden of proof always seems to sit with Phoenix, and it's seemingly never enough just to prove your client innocent, but then you have to go on the offensive and pull a turnabout, unearthing the real killer and proving them guilty beyond all doubt. Not only tying them to the crime, but proving their motivation. And that's another fun part of the Japanese courts. They put a lot of stock into motivation. They want to know not only the who, what, where, and when of a crime, but the why. In some ways, Danganronpa's death trials are less corrupt and inept. Despite all of this, court staff, rival prosecutors, and members of the police are mostly presented as well-intentioned people who try and do right. It doesn't entirely undercut the satire. Prosecutors toe the line between good people hurt by their own power and corruption within their office, evil pricks who abuse their power, and those in between. Plus, you know, the judge is a lovable old moron. I could never bring myself to hate the guy. Ace Attorney games have four to five cases per entry, with each case being self-contained. The events of each separated by months of time. One case could see you dealing with a restaurant poisoning, while another is about cracking clown crimes. A central plot runs in the background of each game, and may go unmentioned for entire cases, but gets resolved in the finale, alongside the trial. In the first game, it's the DL6 case, and the past of Miles Edgeworth, your rival, and the prosecutor you face each case. Trials and Tribulations has my favorite prosecutor, Godot. He has an unexplained grudge against Phoenix, and the mystery surrounding femme fatale Dahlia Hawthorne. You begin a chapter shortly before or after the murder has taken place, and it ends as the trial closes. You experience very little of Phoenix's downtime, 
Danganronpa, meanwhile, has six cases with a trial each, along with prologue and epilogue chapters. Unlike Phoenix Wright, you never leave the perspective of each entry's player character, except for occasional brief stints. And even then, there are few, if any, time jumps. You enter the death game, and you're getting the full experience through thick and thin and major and minor events. Your only company are the 15 other participants, along with Monokuma and whatever entourage he may have, and the cast will dwindle as the game goes on. A central story arc about the mystery behind the death game, how to escape, and what's going on in the outside world runs through each trial and the times in between. Since you never leave the protagonist's perspective, there are good chunks of time spent in between killings where the characters attempt to escape the death game, form friendships and make enemies, create self-imposed rules to try and make life inside the death game a little bit easier and death a bit harder, and discover the identity of a possible traitor amongst them. That's until Monokuma comes along with a motive, and someone puts a murder plot into motion. Following the trial, a new area of the school opens up, which tends to reveal another chunk of the mystery and give everyone some new toys with which to kill each other. The game also has free time segments taking place between story beats, where you can go and hang out with still surviving cast members and get extra backstory from them, along with skills usable during the class trial. This doesn't affect the course of the story and is entirely optional. I'm sorry to say, but if they're slated to die, you cannot save your favourite anime, bud. Both of these structures have advantages and drawbacks. Phoenix Wright can offer far more varied cases a lot more easily, each with their own rules and cast. There's no significant downtime. If you just want a murder mystery, you launch the game and some poor sod's already dead. It delivers a lot of light-hearted character moments and levity during the investigation and trial, so it's not lacking for personality. Danganronpa is a lot more limited in scope and a slower starter but gives far greater amounts of time to delve into an ensemble cast of characters. It lets you see relationships grow, change, and get cut tragically short. Its downtime isn't without substance in regards to the class trials either. Little innocuous lines and seemingly innocent events are already providing clues for you. Danganronpa also tries to achieve a claustrophobic and suspenseful atmosphere, so having a consistent cast and not knowing who's going to go next achieves that. After beating both series, when I decided to go back to Phoenix Wright, I could start anywhere in any game and not feel too out of place. It's possible to do that in Danganronpa, but a lot more jarring. So, let's get to the investigation. And we'll begin with Danganronpa. Following the discovery of a body, the students are given a small amount of time with which to play detective. It's very simple. You talk to people or examine things by clicking on them. These provide clues in the form of truth bullets, usable in the trial. It's far from a pixel hunt, which I guess I'm thankful for. The button that instantly reveals everything in an environment may be a bit much though. When an environment has been thoroughly clicked through, you'll be told you're finished here and told to go elsewhere, sometimes even getting a list of where to go clicking next. Investigation in Danganronpa feels more like a courtesy than an actual mechanic. It does start getting you thinking about the mystery and what may come up in the trial, but it often feels like an extended part of the story time. Ace Attorney's investigations go far in the opposite direction, being very involved in a point-and-click sort of way, which, I will admit now, I don't care for point-and-clicks, but these did hold my interest. Even if I am a moron who got lost every once in a while, I suppose I should be thankful for a guiding hand in Danganronpa. Besides needing to examine the environment to ferret out clues, interrogating witnesses has a lot more to it. Each can be asked several questions, and you can present evidence to each of them to get more information. There is a lot of back and forth. As you learn more, you often need to go back and corroborate it with other witnesses, and presenting the right evidence may lead to even more questions. In the second and third entries, Phoenix is given a Magatama by Pearl Fay. This charm allows him to see when he is being lied to, but he has to ask the correct questions to reveal the lie. Once the lie has been revealed, Phoenix has to present evidence to crack Cyclops and get the truth. So, while you may be putting the pieces together in your head during Danganronpa's investigative portions, Ace Attorney is already throwing questions at you that you need to answer. You're already putting evidence you've gathered to good use, it serves to make the cases more intricate. In both titles, you cannot proceed to the trial until you have everything you need. The time limits are purely narrative and artificial, and Ace Attorney's investigations are much longer and far more tricky. The investigations in Danganronpa aren't bad per se, but they just exist as a formality. You click on things, you get information, and you're not required to do anything with it just yet. You could blindly mash through these, and yes, you'll have a lot of trial troubles if you do, but you can. Phoenix Wright does not allow you to coast this early on. If I slipped up and missed a detail, I could be blindly stumbling around for a while. You need to really interrogate witnesses and start tying evidence to their whereabouts early on. Thanks to the Magatama, there's already mystery-solving gameplay before you even make it to the courtroom.
The games also differ in how much importance it gives different types of evidence. Ace Attorney asks for more tangible, material evidence only, objects which prove a why, where, and when. It's far stricter about what qualifies as admissible, which is a fair distinction. This game takes place in a facsimile of a proper legal system. Testimonies and alibis are only useful when material evidence backs them up. Written testimonies are only occasionally used and tend to be delivered in court. Character profiles are also used as evidence, mind, but their use is quite rare, and only used when someone contradicts their physical characteristics. Essentially, verbal evidence is only used by Phoenix as an aside to more powerful evidence – photographs, videotapes, murder weapons, and autopsy reports. Danganronpa features high school students. They are at best amateur sleuths in an unconventional situation. As such, far greater stock is placed into witness accounts and alibis. If two people can corroborate a story, it's evidence. That said, murder weapons and physical evidence are still very much there. It's just that words alone qualify as truth bullets for the class trial. Danganronpa's evidence is far more loose. You're trying to convince high school kids, not a court of law. And it works given the smaller scope of the setting, time frame, and the fact that this is, at the end of the day, a group of teenagers yelling at each other. <laughs> With our evidence in the court record and truth bullets loaded, we're ready to go and yell at people. Since the inspiration for this video came about from the music and visuals, let's start with some back-to-back -back gameplay from both to set the pace. to believe it? Perhaps if you had an alibi, that would change things. Oh, an alibi, huh? Now we're talking! When you compare your past murders to this incident, the modus operandi matches completely. No, that's wrong! Are the methods of murder really exactly the same? I'm not so sure about that. Danganronpa goes for stylish psychopop presentation. The trials are a lot more lively. You're up against the time limit, and you not only need to put the right truth bullet to the right statement, but land the shot. You have fast and slow motion to help you do this. And I feel it does capture the essence of a group of people screaming at each other fairly well. I adore its chaotic presentation. Danganronpa is the far more mechanically complex of the two titles at this stage, but I'd also argue it's still far simpler. That slow Phoenix Wright footage wasn't to make it seem less impactful. I do apologize if it felt I was leading you along. Phoenix Wright with its less dynamic presentation, unlimited time, and slower, more thoughtful music can be just as nail-biting, if not more so. And when shit gets going, the courtroom antics are frantic in their own way. Here's the difference between them. Danganronpa tests reflexes, quick reading, and aim alongside your understanding of events. However, you are only given a handful of truth bullets, and the statements you can attack are all highlighted. There's far less room to actually go wrong. As out of the gate, the game has eliminated several wrong options for you. There are a handful of times where the game will ask you to select from all of your available evidence, but it's infrequent. The first game in particular was very bad about this, only giving you a tiny amount of bullets, and if you let the debate play out, which you may want to the first time through to hear what everyone's going to say, Makoto would spell out where your attention should be. Later games gave more bullets per debate and worded its debate monologues with a bit more ambiguity. Phoenix Wright does not demand any arcade reflexes, however during cross-examination it doesn't highlight statements. It's entirely on you to see if anything sticks out, and you have all of your available evidence on hand at all times. It's entirely up to you to eliminate what's irrelevant. Your options when reviewing testimony are to either press on a statement or present evidence if you feel something contradicts it. It's often best to press on everything beforehand to ferret out any inconsistencies and get additional testimony. 
but this may be dangerous if the prosecution feels that you're badgering the witness. You have to pick your battles. At other times, pressing is the way forward. Evidence won't need to be presented, and new facts being brought to light are enough to move the trial ahead. Both games have health bars which are punished for making mistakes. Danganronpa has an influence meter, which can be strengthened with skills. Phoenix Wright uses a dynamic damage system. Depending on what you're answering, it can go from a mild slip-up to instant dismissal of your entire case. One thing both games do brilliantly is making presenting the correct evidence feel good. Objection! Ace Attorney's objection is possibly more famous than the series it comes from. Phoenix slams down on his desk, points to the witness and starts putting the pieces together. Even with limited presentation, the timing of the objection music kicking in was always satisfying. I love these moments and there are a lot of them. And naturally, Danganronpa's got it down pat too. With a bombastic pop-up and a literal glass shatter as you make a break in the case. It's completely on the nose and I love it. Before we continue on, Danganronpa's non-stop debates don't end there. New elements are regularly introduced. For starters, you get white noise which needs to be silenced. The second game introduces rebuttal showdowns, a rather literal interpretation of a battle of wits, where you need to cut down an opponent's argument before hitting it with a truth blade. In Danganronpa 1 and 2, you can also pick up other people's statements and use them as evidence. This always felt really off to me as a feature, it never mixed well and was often difficult to gauge when I should be using other people's words instead of my own. One area Danganronpa goes into that Ace Attorney doesn't is varying up how you use evidence. In Danganronpa 2, you can shoot blue statements to consent with them, providing evidence to back them up. The third game replaced using other people's statements with the far more interesting perjury system, where you can invert your truth bullets and use them to lie. Tying into one of the game's core themes about how often lies and truths can be intertwined, this feature is a big improvement. It also created back routes, optional paths through a case if you can spot where you should be able to lie. This is a feature I'd love to see expanded on if there is ever another Danganronpa. As it is now, back routes rejoin the main path pretty quickly. The third game also brought with it mass panic debates. When an argument really breaks down, everyone starts trying to yell over each other, tripling the amount of details you have to process. Both games also have answering questions and spotting relevant details or inconsistencies in photographic evidence. Danganronpa does have one very interesting difference. Phoenix will often be the one to out the real killer, whereas Danganronpa often comes to the point when you have to put everything together yourself and choose who it all points to. Danganronpa also has minigames, but I've sadly found them to be more missed than hit. Hangman's Gambit is, well, Hangman, but sequential letters only. I've always found this to be the most tricky minigame, often due to clumsy word choice. Seriously? Schizo? Each game has reiterated on Hangman's Gambit, trying to give Hangman an action-y edge. I think in V3 they found a comfortable place for it and anything is better than the brilliantly named Improved Hangman's Gambit, at best a stroke in video game form. Logic Dive and Psyche Taxi are doled up methods of asking you questions. The inside of my brain sadly doesn't look like this when I run into a conundrum. While something of a problem in both series, you can just brute force answers with little loss if you happen to not know the answer. But these minigames worsen it, Logic Dive in particular. You can see the right answer in the case you do get it wrong. Mind Mine is about unearthing and picking the appropriate object. This is a minigame which is more let down by the cases, which rarely provide enough sensible options where it pops up to be challenging. Each case also contains at least one rhythm game boss battle, which are not bad per se. It's just that, if you like rhythm games, you've played better. If you don't, I have doubts these are going to bring you around, and either way, did you come to a crime-solving visual novel to play a rhythm game? I am sorry to be dismissive, it's just that they don't add anything.
Debate Scrum is a new addition and one I do quite like, mostly due to bombastic presentation and music. It's a speed reading word association game. Read your opponent's statement, spot the keyword, and counter it. You see, my big problem with Danganronpa's minigames overall is they feel like a substitute way of solving parts of the case when better methods already exist, or otherwise do not add to the mystery whatsoever. However, we will end on a positive. Climax Reasoning a genuinely good closer for each case. You match pictures to manga panels in an attempt to recreate the murder beat by beat, start to finish. It's stylishly presented, lets you unwind after the intensity of the case, and tie all those little loose ends built up over the course of the trial into a nice cohesive whole. Phoenix Wright doesn't have an equivalent for these. The court from start to finish is built on witness testimonies, the questions it raises, and cutscenes. It's purely a personal thing, but I prefer this. Witness testimonies are the best part of Phoenix Wright. And the non-stop debate, mass panic debate, and rebuttal showdowns are the best part of Danganronpa. I always felt the minigames were taking me away from what I enjoyed most. I didn't entirely zone out during them, but I wasn't as engaged as I was at all other times. It's a matter of both writing style and presentation, but the people in the Ace Attorney universe are better liars, and in playing Phoenix, I often felt I was playing as someone far smarter and more perceptive than I am. Which isn't much of a surprise, he's a legendary fictitious defense attorney. I'm reviewing video games on the internet. You can't really get less perceptive. Phoenix makes occasional great leaps with the evidence he provides, and that makes it occasionally tricky to judge what you should be presenting. Between the two series, I only ever consulted a guide when it came to Ace Attorney, but I always felt bad when I read the answer, because it always logically followed. I saw what the answer was, and I immediately pieced together why I should be thinking that way. But on the other hand, there are times when you have to fail. Even if your evidence would have been correct, you have to choose for Phoenix to throw in the towel and concede that he doesn't know, only for a story beat to give him a detail or new perspective, or even just motivation to continue onwards, and then you're allowed to present the correct evidence. It always felt odd to pick failure when you could be correct. You're just correct five seconds earlier than the protagonist. These never sat well with me. Danganronpa's lies are far more simple and in your face, and that comes from a combination of factors. Spoken evidence being usable as truth bullets, the large text which shows you the limited places you can argue or agree with, the speedy presentation of the text means that subtler lies have to be handled carefully, since you have less time to read and intuit each sentence, even if you use slow motion or wait for the next go around. In some ways, Phoenix Wright's limited screen space forcing its dialogue and descriptions to be shorter and more concise really helps with its writing. Because on the other hand, Danganronpa's truth bullet descriptions are far more wordy and all-encompassing. There's less ambiguity as to where they will be useful. It's worth noting that Danganronpa has two difficulty toggles. Logic and action difficulty dictate the difficulty of non-stop debates and minigames, with lower difficulties removing certain gameplay obstacles and lessening the amount of truth bullets you have. I recorded my footage on the hardest difficulty difficulty settings, and I played through the whole series on medium beforehand, but I had trouble noticing much difference going from medium to hard. This is comparative, so I want to state that I'm not saying Danganronpa never stumped me and I solved every mystery without pause. I had to stop and think on a lot of occasions, and I did get a lot of satisfaction out of Danganronpa, but between the two series, it's less tricky. The games obviously have a massive tonal difference. We'll use when you start zeroing in on the killer, for instance. Danganronpa is a dark, often edgy series. Its jokes are mostly rooted in dark humour. The concept alone of students trapped in a school and forced into a killing game is obviously not going to sit well with everyone. And while each game does end with a hopeful message, there is a lot of sacrifice getting to that point. Catching the killer in Danganronpa is often more tragic than anything else, as most cases give you reason to feel sympathy for the killer as and after you have them dead to rights, but they still have to die. It's you or them. In many Danganronpa trials, there is a point where catching the killer goes from being fun and exciting to... Well, not so good. And I mean that in a good way. Phoenix Wright conversely makes this cornering triumphant and cathartic. You turn a courtroom that has been entirely against you to your side. The prosecution is scrambling, panicking in its bid to discredit you. The killer often throws a tantrum, letting you really enjoy Phoenix putting them in their place. They often do not go down gracefully. This isn't always the case, many of the killers have a degree of tragedy to them, but even then the cases find a way to end on a happy note.
Honestly, tonal preference is a personal matter, and I enjoyed both series in different ways. I try to buy into the mood a game wants me to have, and Phoenix Wright is a lot more light-hearted. I grew to really like and care for the many series mainstays. A lot of jokes and little callbacks worked for me, and the banter between characters developed over the course of the three titles in really nice ways. The courtroom had far lower stakes than the class trials, but were just as gripping, and Phoenix Wright lets you feel victorious in cornering the killer and proving a person's innocence. Danganronpa, on the other hand, is a horror game. It's a bit of a goofy, eccentric one, but it is a horror. It's meant to have tragedy. I often felt for its characters. The setup of having 16 fleshed out characters, all of whom could be up next for the chopping block, kept each game sufficiently tense. And each game had enough characters who I genuinely rooted for, or were otherwise sad when they died or turned to killing. Each game gets a bit more predictable in that regard, but there's at least always one good swerve per game. I did try and avoid outright spoilers with this video, which is hard to do with Danganronpa, as any trial beyond the first will always contain spoilers, and that's why only the first trial of V3, the latest entry, has been shown in any great detail. If you want to solve murders, I will say you can't go wrong with either series. Both of them have good twists and turns within them, and are satisfying to work out in your head. I enjoy calling something early just as much as having my expectations blown out in a satisfying way, and both series delivered moments like that. Despite their core similarities, both series have ultimately different aims, and the way they pursue them is evident in their gameplay, writing, and tone. Phoenix Wright has a stronger emphasis on quickly getting you into a complex murder mystery with an interesting cast of its own characters. Danganronpa juggles its murder mysteries with a large yet dwindling ensemble cast and a far greater focus on its own central plot, which is a for better or worse type of deal. The central plots of each Danganronpa game have good moments in between a lot of stupidity, which I'll say the trials more than make up for. I find it far easier to recommend Phoenix Wright to people for a good few reasons. Danganronpa's art style and even its very synopsis can be off-putting, but it is also a slower starter. Despite its faster-paced gameplay, it takes a good hour or two before someone even dies. There's a lot of reading to set the scene. Meanwhile, you press start in the first Ace Attorney game, and there's already a corpse. Phoenix Wright does a far better job putting its best foot forward, getting you into a simple starter case, setting the scene, and letting you experience the best part of the game within 10 minutes. When I explain that it's a game about solving murder mysteries, that doesn't imply that shooter skills will be needed. I could give a copy of Phoenix Wright to my mum and she could have a good time with it. In fact, I have. I couldn't do the same for Danganronpa. Besides anything else, it has a secondary set of skills you wouldn't expect to need in solving a murder, and even if you do set the difficulty to low, it still remains a barrier to entry and enjoyment for some. Until next time, I'm Tsnakera, and I'm done playing detective. If you enjoyed this video and want to support me in further episodes of playing, please spread this video around, and if you wish, please donate to my Patreon. Every little bit helps. And at $5 or more, you will get access to Afterthought videos where I answer viewer questions, test out things in the game that's requested, and wrap up any minor details that don't make it into the main video. A thank you to my patrons Eric Nace, DBZKing119, Noonan, Sigurd, Tomaskos, Armin Reddy, Austin, Wagman, Alt F4 Games, Samson, Arthur D. Gonzalez Martin, Johnny Z, Corrupted, Cages Jolnionis, Zeno, Nick Morrow, Jonathan Gutierrez, Wrights, Elowin, The Tried Piper, Bran, Jonathan Hume, Tom Hughes, Jack Saint, Rafe, Andreas Huber, Hate Gregorian, I Love OP, A Jojo Reference, Cody Drager, Pertwee O'Dedra, Psycho Soda Pop, Sturve the Khajiit, Neoji, Similar Dude, MF Music Nerd here, and Liam Esco. Thank you all so much, please join me next time.